Well, hello, welcome to Christian Media Review. My name is William Hemsworth, and thank you so much for being with me this week. Well, if anyone knows me, the early church fathers is a favorite subject of mine. Um, when I was at Liberty University, I majored in uh, church history, and just reading the fathers just brought a whole new dimension to how the early Christians lived, what they believed and really what they had to go through just to claim the title of Christian. And so in this week's uh, episode of Christian Media Review, I just wanted to review a, a great resource, a great resource uh, about the Church Fathers. It's, the book is titled Learning Theology with the Church Fathers. It's a great book. It's a introductory level. It's not you know, crazy academic or anything. I think it's a it's just a good resource to have. Just a great resource to have. This book is written by Christopher Hall, and he do, he does a great job in breaking down the theology of the Church Fathers in terms really anyone can understand. You know, from the from the New Christian all the way to the Bible scholar. Now, in the preface, Dr. Hall explains that the fathers continually remind us that theology is at best broken speech about the transcendent and mysterious God who draws near to us in the incarnation of the Son and presence of the Spirit. In the opening chapter, Dr. Hall gives a... He, he describes us what a church father is. You know, he talks about the question of authority, the Trinity... No, the incarnation, Christ's work, question of humanity, question of the church, the question of the future. Each chapter has a theme and issue that's dealt with, along with great quotes from the church fathers. Um, chapters are as follows. Uh, first chapter, Christ the Son, begotten, not made. Uh, next, the mystery and wonder of the Trinity. Uh, next, Christ, divine and human. Uh, next, on the Holy Spirit. Next one is sin, grace, and the human condition. The next one is God's transcendent providence. Next chapter is God's wise and loving providence. Uh, next chapter is the sacred scriptures. Next one is one holy apostolic church. And then the next one is the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. So some huge topics there. Many books have been written about each of those topics. And just within those individual, individual chapters, excuse me, I can't talk here for some reason. Within those individual chapters, he gives quotes from the early church fathers about what they believed on those subjects. Now in chapter 2, Dr. Hall goes in a great, de a great deal about the Arian controversy. He outlines the idea that Arius thought that Jesus was a created being and the counter-argument of Athanasius, who argued that Jesus was coexistent and not created. Uh, in chapter 3, the Trinity is discussed, and Dr. Hall describes Gregory of Nazianzus and his perspective of describing the Trinity. You know, Dr. Hall, regarding uh, Gregory of Nazianzus, writes, quote, By this time, Gregory, you and I are tempted to scream. Our linguistic and spatial categories are proving incapable of adequately describing God, which turns out to be exactly Gregory's point. So Dr. Hall shows how difficult the formulation of Trinitarian doctrine is, or was, is to be. Uh, but to prove the point, he points to a sermon Augustine gave that points to the manifestation of the Trinity. Now, there's a lot that could be written about the content of this book. But for me, the price of admission, if you will, for this book boils down to two things. Uh, the first is the Arian controversy, because Dr. Hall does a masterful job of explaining what was going on at the time. The issue was if the Son was a created being or not. So, in other words, was he begotten or made? In the mind of Arius, if the Son was begotten, then there must have been a time when he was not begotten. Arius says Jesus is divine in some way, but cannot have the same nature as the Father. So frankly, Arius seems to want his cake and eat it too. 
So on the one hand, he wants to affirm that the sun is in some way divine, and on the other hand, you know, if Arius is to preserve God's simplicity and indivisibility, he must affirm that the sun has a beginning. Now, to this, the church fathers use scripture and philosophical terms at the Council of Nicaea to come up with the Nicene Creed. Athanasius was center stage theologically in this council to prove the errors of Arius. Now, the Trinity is discussed in chapter 3. I think this is another key takeaway of the book. Um, Hall points out the intricacies of the Trinity having been debated from the 4th century to the Enlightenment, in some cases even today, because in a lot of circles this debate is still going on. Hall points out that in some Christian circles the discussion of the Trinity is too esoteric, and some try not to discuss it at all. The Church Fathers had issues in describing the Trinity as well, and at times it seems to be an impossible but very important task. Now, though it was difficult, the Fathers developed Trinitarian doctrine because it was based on Scripture. Well, and tradition, really. The defense of the Trinity paved the way for non-biblical terms to be used. Dr. Hall explains, quote, A Trinitarian model, one founded on biblical exegesis but free to employ new terms not found in the Bible among them, homoousios, to explain and elucidate the implications of the biblical data, concerning the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now I do have a couple minor critiques of the work. Uh, the first is in relation to the Arian controversy and, and the divinity of Christ. The divinity of Christ and his relation to the Father had been brought up a century earlier by the modalists. Uh, the modalist view was that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were successive modes of activity and revelation of one God. Now, even though Dr. Hall was very thorough here, he didn't touch on this controversy, and it could have laid a great background for what would eventually happen with Arius. So what is the eternal future of those who follow Arius? No, though it's implied, it's not implicitly stated. So in conclusion, the teaching of the Church Fathers are very important for the Church today. Uh, these are men who were Christians that died... I mean, these are not men who were Christians that died, that merely died centuries ago. Uh, they paved the way and dealt with many issues that we cannot fathom today. And in some cases, they're issues we even deal with today. Now, it's upsetting to the reviewer, myself, that many Christians today are not concerned with their theology, and some have never even heard of the Church Fathers. You see, they helped... The Church Fathers helped develop the doctrines that we proclaim today. Should we not make an effort to better understand them? So, learning theology of the Church Fathers is a great resource, like I said at the beginning of the show. It's a great resource for anyone who wants a better understanding of Church history, theology, and ultimately their faith. This is an excellent book, and Dr. Hall, uh, I commend Dr. Hall for his work here. So I highly recommend that you all uh, check this book out. So thank you for joining me on this episode of Christian Media Review. Um, please check out this book. I think it's a great resource. Uh, you can go to my website, williamhemsworth.com. I have a review there of the book itself. Uh, so God bless you. Um, have a fantastic week. And we'll catch you next week on Christian Media Review. Mm -hmm.